Hello, Pisces friends. Welcome to your single spread. This is for the second half of April. Hell, 15th, the 30th, 31st. And uh, this is for singles, super singles, totally singles, I say. Because uh, we want to be kind of wide open here. Uh, to the universe to bring in uh, your soulmate. I already saw a little energy on them. Got the new deck here, the Ethereal Tarot. It's a little bit lighter. So we can see it better, not sure. So here we're looking for not your next problem, next ex-wife, uh, next ex-boyfriend, girlfriend, husband. This is the one that's right for you. Uh, that's what we're asking Spirit to show us today. And the spread is the uh, emotional, intellectual, sexual, love nature, and core value and lifestyle of the four pillars of relationship. This is their magician coming out in terms of their emotional nature, and the swords coming out with it. It's a little bit of a different uh, interpretation to this. Let me look to it. They're intellectual here. Hanged man. Hmm. Is sword now, not that kind of reading. So, remember, this is your person here, so there's nothing bad here. Um, um, but it is, it is them, it's kind of their emotional self, unconscious, or conscious self, their intellect more. Uh, so, the magician, somebody's very resourceful. about their moon. Kind of wonder if it might not be a Scorpio moon. This eight of swords here, the unconscious position of their uh, emotions and unconscious. Uh, some deep down thing, probably from the past. This usually points to a bad childhood. Um, the magician, I think it shows too how they may have learned to deal with things in childhood. Um, they may have been an active child and they, you know there's only so much that children can do with problems you know they can't like pack up the uh, VW and, and drive away um, but that's what leads to this kind of resourcefulness you know like maybe what they learned is they kind of had to take care of themselves so there's a story they may tell you like you know I think I took care kind of raised myself some energy like this, guys. Yeah. You know, they may have to do something to sort of keep themselves balanced. Remember, this is your person. Now, when I say do something, it could be exercise. Maybe they know that's how they need to do. Maybe they know they have to eat right, get enough sleep. Maybe they know they have to meditate. Uh, but I get a feeling like they would have uh, discovered... Um, and it's also someone that's very sensitive, I tell you, to smells, tastes, uh, sensations. Uh, they're very aware, I think, of their body. And very sensitive with this Eight of Swords. Um, that's maybe the, uh, the taking what they were dealt and had to deal with and turning that energy into being uh, more aware. Like, like you sit down for dinner, they'd be like, I don't eat gluten, you know. Um, not because I'm a new age weirdo, because when I eat it, you know, I get indigestion. And I notice that every time I eat it, I get indigestion. Don't eat it, I don't get it. So, there, you know, I'm not like that. I'm sad, you know. I'm all the time. Someone has to remind me, you know, I'm even connected to what I ate last if I get sick. But as someone, be very in touch like that, you know. Um, maybe very sensitive to you know how they are and uh, their temperature is whether it's hot or cold human or not you may notice that so they may tell you a story about their childhood along those lines you know in the hanged man and the three of swords they are in childhood, they may have taken extra time to get through school. Again, they may tell you this story, too. and There may have been something going on, too. Of course, it works together with the issues around the house and stuff. Um, 
It could even have like a learning disorder here, especially with the Three of Swords down below. He knows it's next to the Eight of Swords emotionally. God, I said this the other day. I mean, this could be the loss of a loved one in childhood, a mother, father. Could, I mean, it could be a sibling. It's something that really so profoundly affects everyone anyone's childhood that happens, God forbid. Definitely going to be a listener with the hangman here and the three of swords. Um, they're going to be particularly sensitive to criticism. Um, I don't think they're going to say much. They're not going to be one to speak up for themselves a lot. But they're just like, if it comes to criticism, you're going to see their eyes literally glaze over like if they can't just remove themselves, they might say, you know, like my mom's calling me. <laughs> but I don't think you're going to criticize them. Say if you're in a group of people, they may not even like negative, just negative anything. Negative talking makes them a little nervous. Um, um, again, they, it's not easy with the hangman and the three of swords. Even mentally, they may have to do things to kind of keep themselves balanced. Um, you know, certain, they may want to think about certain things too much or obsessive. It could be a compulsive obsessive disorder here too, definitely. Three of Swords and the Hangman. So maybe there's something they have to do that kind of helps them get, you know, keep uh, even. I guess it would be something like a toxic level. Uh, think about a coping mechanism, maybe even some open-mindedness, if that's what they need to do. So the Queen of Swords, this is their section of nature. Nine of Cups. Okay. Think about that a minute. Come back to it. The Emperor, this is in their lifestyle and core values. They want to be in control. The King of Cups. I love it. It's like the dude if he was the King of Cups. Or Jim Morrison, maybe. Kind of reminds me of the dude. You just imagine that's a white Russian. So quite a interesting mix here. You're the Emperor, King of Cups. Um, you look at this person, and they're kind of delicate and have to work at this kind of balance. Um, but they likely would have readily, ready access to other people's unconscious stuff. Uh, they might, uh, if you're not know, a psychic or something, just be very intuitive, like they could really read a room. And, um, this definitely applies. They, they want to be in control. They want to feel secure when it comes to their home. They're going to be kind of conservative here. Um, but they're going to be more controlling and more conservative uh, around their career and maybe their belief systems and that kind of thing. And, and less so uh, around, say, your relationship. They're going to express more as King of Cups, I think, to you. It'll be like when they are outside the house, they're the Emperor. You know, when they're inside the house, King of Cups. You know, either way, the King in their castle. So their home, very important to them. They're going to want to be nice uh, and comfortable and feel safe to them. They're going to want to be in control of it. They're going to want anyone else. They're going to want your mom living there with them. <laughs> I can tell you that. I'll go there. You know, who does? But no, they're not going to play that. <laughs> you know, I could have want that third party thing, you know. But holy shit, are they solid, you know, and emotionally available too. So it's a nice combination, you know. Emotionally mature. They understand life and everything, you know. They didn't do it themselves. Um, they seem to it seem to held up pretty well, you know. They figured out how to balance themselves, how to get themselves in line to meet their soulmate. They're meeting you. Okay, so the Queen of Swords and the Nine of Cups. So very emotionally, might cry here 
but it's in the bottom part of the unconscious and you know this isn't so much about being independent here and self-fulfillment emotionally um, it's just this nine cup energy I think um, and it kind of shows they might be a screamer sexually um, in terms of uh, love we would look at uh, with the nine of cups and the queen of swords I could see that being maybe almost Aquarius like an Aquarius uh, Venus and then that would make this maybe like a Pisces Mars Aquarius Venus and a Pisces Mars look for that that's what that feels like to me. Aquarius is above the Pisces too. Um, so, uh, I don't say the Queen of Swords makes them dominant, but they don't mind saying what they want. That's why I say combined with the Nine of Cups, they might just be very demonstrative with their vocalizations. Uh, around sex and similarly like around love they're just going to say I love you a lot and remember that when they do that means they want you to say it back <laughs> mm -hmm. so Pisces yeah we're looking at someone may share a Pisces uh, Mars here see where that hits next to your sun that'd have to be bad depends on how the sun and Mars meets chart is doing um, so particularly with more mature people, you learn how to deal with yourself as this person here has, your person. Um, so it's just they're going to bring a real, uh, and a real maturity to the bedroom. You know, they might, uh, they might know what you're doing. You know, not saying they, you know, had a sordid past, um, but I see them being quite confident. You know, maybe that's why they can let go. You know. Um, I hope you like that, and I uh, hope that gives you some idea of what we're talking about, who we're looking at here at Pisces. And if you don't mind liking, it's good karma. I really appreciate that. Uh, remember, every Saturday is uh, Aquarius Pisces Day. Join us, and uh, appreciate everyone subscribing, too. That helps a lot. Thank you, guys.